Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Vordy here, and we're going to be jumping into the Vision of Bahma trial. So these are the units I'm going to be bringing along. I'm just kind of looking at their gear here before jumping in. Uh, I do go over everything at the end of the video, so you can take a look at that as I do tackle about the gear and what we're going to do. So essentially what it is, uh, I've beaten the event a few different times. I didn't want to rush into releasing a video about doing the event without actually understanding it in good detail. So now I have a good understanding of what's going on. Essentially what you want to do is you want to try and buff up your spirit as much as possible. Having uh, two support units with a healer slash support uh, is, is very much advised. Another thing here for free to play players, you might want to try and bring two healers uh, and again beef them up with as much spirit as you can. Making sure that you have as many units stay alive turn one. Um, you can either bring two of your own healers uh, and then bring like a friend that's a strong damage dealer or do the whole support role where all of your characters are support and then bring a friend unit that's really strong. What I did was I actually brought a friend healer and uh, the only damage dealer I really have here is Orlando. Okay, so here we go, round one. Uh, we just want to make sure we get ready for it. So what I'm going to do here for round one for Noctis, he's going to be my support uh, uh what do you call it resurrection dude i don't want him to die because in case both my healers die he can res them i'm gonna cast omni veil here to make sure that the resistances are up to par for everyone orlando will defend uh because i have two healers i'm gonna use one of them to buff defense though i should have just probably defended with both of them uh to make sure that they both stay alive but no big deal so first turn goes uh cloud and refia are down so I'm going to follow up and try to bring up my party because I have Omni Veil on the three units that are alive. I don't really have to worry about doing anything yet. Don't have to rush into trying to res them right away. Uh, also, if you're using Orlando, Knight Sword actually does a ton of damage. So you should utilize Knight Sword because it is a chance for you to be able to heal yourself for a ton of damage or a ton of life as well as dealing a ton of damage, right? So here we go. Round one from the boss. Do some resistance. It's not bad. So I'm going to res up, accidentally clicking something else, but I'm going to use comeback, there it is, uh, to Cloud of Darkness, and then I'm just going to follow up by just healing up with my Refia. So if you're not sure, I'm not actually playing right now, I'm actually commentating on what I've done previously. This was recorded a little while ago when the event just came out. Actually, I did everything in one turn when I was at, uh, what do you call it, on the train. Uh, then I, when I came home, then I can actually record it. So this is actually like my third or fourth time fighting him and using a different team. When I originally beat him, I only brought three units, like a scrub, but we still won. There's no big deal. Alright. So now I'm going to res up Refia, and I'm going to wait for Refia to come up before I do cast Omni Veil. So now my team is ready, and we're set till um, the next time he does his Mega Flare. Okay. So now we're going to be trying to break, uh, start breaking the different thresholds. So at this point I can use uh, Divine Ruination, which does a little bit more bigger chunk of damage. I'm going to start piling those up, trying to break those, uh, what do you call it, um, thresholds. First threshold, he will start introducing a poison move that will poison your characters. Uh, the reason, I, another reason I brought Noctis is because of cover. So technically that will negate it. Uh, and you're going to take some damage, but you're also going to get some hit points back. So having cover is good because it also gives you back some MP. Uh, overall, that's kind of my strategy um, to do that. The two healers is just something that normally I don't run, but uh, I found it very useful in this event, and I think you guys should run it too, just to give yourself some safety, because you really don't need to do a lot of damage. Like it's not a it's not a race, it's not a race. So I'm just showing, making sure here that I do have uh, Saluna Ring on uh, on my Refia before I decide to go ham. Because I'm going to be casting things here. So here we go. So we should break threshold 1. So poison attack. There it is. Poison breath. And now all our units are poisoned. I could use return. Which I do use return at a later time. But it's not a rush. Because cover is up. And I actually overheal. Uh, over the poison. So I'm not I'm not worried. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do Omni Veil. Make sure that is still running. My Refia has got way more spirit. Than the friend Refia I brought. Um, so I heal for a lot more. I can bring my units back to full health from death, whereas the other one is, uh, is struggling. So I'm going to do this link here, and I'm going to go for the Divine Ruination. So essentially right now what I'm thinking is, I'm like, okay, I got to I gotta get to that 50% uh, threshold as soon as possible, because he's going to do Maelstorm. And that Maelstorm, then he's going to bring all my units down to 99% life. So he's going to knock everybody down to like 10, 10 life, 20 life, 30 life, whatever. 
So I'm trying to push for that. I think I get a little bit ballsy in this video too. If I remember correctly, I actually... Uh, I think I just go right for it without like healing at one point. Because I'm just like, you know what, I'm gonna just fight him off and make sure that he can't, uh, can't defeat me. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. So let's see, so we're gonna do embolden. Yeah, so I think, I, uh, maybe it was, I can't remember if this was right on. So here we go, here's return, just to get rid of that poison and any of the debuffs that we got on him. And I'm gonna go and do Link as well, I think. Yeah, we do Link and Divine Ruination one more time. So this brings me pretty close to the threshold. Unless, actually, it looks like I did break it, did I? Did we break it? Did we break it, Melstorm? There it is, so there we go, broke it. Everybody's now nice and weak. And this is why having two healers is really, really nice. I'm gonna do double Kiraja on both healers and my party is good to go, like nothing happened. Right, I don't have to play any catch up because a lot of the times what he's gonna do next, he's gonna tell you that he's about to do a giant mega flare of death to your face, okay? So, I just, like, you wanna make sure you're ready for that. I was gonna make Cloud defend, but, uh, and Cloud, I mean, Cloud of Darkness. I was gonna make her defend, but I ended up clicking her and Whatever. Now she's gonna take face face plant damage. So let's see. I think he does the flare. Getting ready for it. Yep. A massive beam is ready. So all I can really do this turn is to make sure that at least some of my healers, or at least one of my healers, is defending, as well as knock this out of the way. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna defend with my refia. I'm gonna let that second refia die because I don't really care about him. Uh, my refia is actually more important to me. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, that's why this this turn actually uh, took the flare to the face, and everybody lived, except the other weak refia who didn't defend. So everything is down. We're gonna refresh. So as you guys can see, it's technically like a tank and spank idea. It's it's just he's rinsing and repeating. He's just adding new mechanics to your uh, to your fight. The after you get the fifty percent, the fight becomes more about making sure that you are at full life before he does his mega flare. Otherwise, you're gonna get killed. And this is why I suggest bringing two healers. Right? It, it's gonna be very hard for you to negate it. There is another way you can negate it. You can bring a bunch of dragoons and you know just attack and make sure that you avoid whenever he does it. But honestly, like I don't think that's the strategy to go to try and make them avoid things like that. So he does a mega flare, I think, every other turn, every third turn, essentially, it comes out there. So Noctis is taking a nap. So I think I'm at full life. I'm gonna bring up my refia. No, I. Uh, oh yes, I think I did a yeah. I did a double double res because I was thinking in my head, okay, he's gonna do a mega flare next turn, which means he's gonna cast less spells. So I'm not gonna be worried. I'm gonna use Night Sword to heal up. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Cause I'm gonna resist everything anyways. So it'll be good. 133,000 damage from Night Sword and healing myself for 13k. Girl! Don't even, don't even mess with the Vordy. So there you go, we survived that round as I anticipated. And we're gonna have to... Hit. This one is out of MP almost, because she doesn't have the, what do you call it? Saluna Ring or the Vestment of the Mind, so like, her MP is done. But as you can see, my Refia's MP, who only has Saluna Ring right now, is, is just killing it. Here comes the Mega Flare, boom, everyone dies, oh sorry, uh, one character dies except the ones who defended, which is what we want. This time I'm gonna go Reza right away. There's Omniveil, we're gonna do double Kiraja. To heal up, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, ah, should I cast an Ether on that other one? Ah, probably not. And then I was like, then I started thinking like, is there any music on it? But it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna overwrite the music anyways with myself talking as well as the music playing behind so eh, it doesn't really matter so here's Earthshaker, Aqua Breath and what else did he cast? and Blaze, Blaze is, is good take that Blaze Noctis dies this turn I believe, yeah it does ah uh, yeah, what did, we, what did I do here? I think I rezzed them it was dual cast, full life and Kiraja I think there it is, full life and Kiraja boom do it, do it, easy peasy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so at the end of this video, I did kind of already record like the ending where I was kind of chatting. So you guys will see that at the end where I talk about the units. But essentially, as you can see, the fight is just a rinse repeat. Make sure you're at ready at full life before he does his mega flare. 
everybody is defending except the one unit that's gonna bring you guys back to life. You're gonna res that person back up, by the time they're resed up and ready to go, the rest of the units are about to take a beating again, right? So I'm thinking to myself, like, what do I do here? I'm like, uh, like, I don't know, he can't really do anything, he's just gonna do a single Kiraja and then they're gonna die anyways. So I'm like, meh, what am I gonna do here? And I make a risky move, a little bit of a risk -a I'm going to point warp out, and I'm going to defend, and hope for the best. Because <laughs> that Refia is dead, he's only got 5 MP, so who cares. So I'm just going to leave that one done, there goes Noctis, we're going to heal everybody up, back to full, and then we're going to cast Omni Veil as well, because that is off. There's the Omni Veil. Looking good. <clears throat> Divine Ruination. So essentially at this point I already know I broke his uh, final barrier, so I'm looking at trying to get him as close as possible to be able to get that uh, Esper kill, because I want to make sure that I complete everything in one go. Uh, even though I've already completed everything, I'm just showing you guys that it is possible with this method that I'm uh, using here. So I'm like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Am I gonna, I'm going to bring back the other one. And I'm, I'm a little bit nervous and I'm thinking, I'm like, I, I might just give her MP. I'm thinking, like, should I use an elixir? And I was like, ah, no, that's too expensive for, like, really just about being like, just give him some chocolate. Just have some chocolate. You'll be fine. You'll be okay. So give me the chocolate over to that bad boy. Though it's not really necessary because when I was thinking about this afterwards, I'm like, ah, I could have just left her dead because I really don't need it. But I made the right decision because I believe I actually end up taking one more Mega Flare to the face. I think, yeah, I think I end up taking this flare to the face because I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I don't want to rush this. I got this under control. I'm not going to take the risk of just dying um, to complete everything. So I'm taking a look at the missions here. So green magic, I didn't use at all because we're using Omni Veil's little check mark here. We're going to be focusing on killing with Esper. Party of five, check mark, we're good to go. Uh, so I'm looking right now, I'm like, which Esper should I use? Like, which unit do I want to make sure they're alive so that I can use that Esper for the kill? So essentially, I can't use Orlando because Orlando is going to be doing the last part of the damage. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what, as long as Refia is alive, I will be able to use Ifrit, and that is enough. It's enough to start the event, and then I'll be fine. So defend, defend. We do have a resistances, we're going to defend, and defend. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Mega Flare. So, two units are down. I really don't care if they're down or not right now, because it doesn't matter. Because uh, right now I have it, I can do enough damage to to kill him. So I'm gonna heal up. In the next round he's gonna be doing all of his elemental damage, which I can just eat. But I'm actually gonna melee attack him here. I'm thinking I'm like you know what I don't want to kill him right away. I'm going to uh, just do the melee. So here we go. Buff my resistances. I'm just gonna melee just to bring him down a little bit more. After I double check everything, obviously like triple check it. I'm looking at the damage and I'm calculating my head. I'm like, wait a minute, like 150 is about this. You know what? I'm just going to stay safe. So there we go. So I'm going to use all the elements, which is fine because we're going to resist most of them. He can't kill me because I already know he can't uh, just by paying attention to it. So we're good. We're in the clear. I'm going to finish it off here uh, with Hellfire. I'm going to use, uh, what do you call it? Divine Ruination here as well as using Clouds. Cloud of Darkness is uh, special for her Limit Burst, actually. Alright, so you cast it first, and the second the animation gets cancelled, you click click, and that's the best way to make sure that you get all the damage in, and then it gets killed. And that's how I've been doing the Esper Challenge, and I've been getting it every single time, it's the one how I did it before this, so that's pretty much it. So at this point, you can enjoy the rest of the commentary as far as the video ending, and that's pretty much the fight. Alright, let's take a look at the units here um, that I brought. Though so I showed you guys at the start of the video, we kind of went over it. I'll just kind of explain why I picked these guys. So, 
I brought Noctis, and then he could be replaced with another unit that has Raze. Uh, essentially, that's what I was looking for. I was gonna I use this cover a few times, but uh, really you only need one damage dealer to do as much damage as they can, and you should be giving them Odin, but uh, a support unit. So essentially, my support support was Noctis, and I brought him specifically for the ability to raise and to be able to avoid from dying. So like I used the jump sometimes, sometimes I just made him defend depending on how many buffs we had on him. Uh, but that's essentially what I brought this unit. Somebody that could raise and can stay alive during the Mega Flares, right? So that's why I geared him in a way that he had no items that were, um, you know, giving him any weakness, right? Except the light damage that we got from, uh, what do we call it, from Diablos. He was still doing fine the whole time. He was good. Um, yeah, just random gear. Honestly, I don't think you need any of this stuff. You should buff him up as much as you can with Defense and Spirit to make sure that he stays alive because his job is not to deal damage, okay? Uh, same thing with abilities. I put Poach on here because I was going to use him as a damage dealer, but honestly, from the three or four times I've beat this event, kind of testing out different things, honestly, the best thing for Noctis to do is not do any damage. Just sit back, uh, do cover, uh, do come back to raise, uh, avoid damage. That's his job, okay? So I, I geared up my Orlando in a way that he's doing damage, but also that he is able to survive. So my Noctis, or my uh, Orlando caps out around 1000 damage, 1001, um, but it's not about damage because he's got different thresholds that you need to beat, and you just want to make sure that you hit them uh, in a position when you're ready to be able to recover. Because the magic damage, unless you have Marie, the magic damage is still a little bit more rough. So you just want to kind of look at it that way. So I kind of put things on him that would give him spirit, you know, more as much spirit as I could possibly get without being resisted. Same thing as far as his equipment. I put blade mastery on there and large sword mastery uh, to kind of uh, take advantage of these two to boost his damage a bit. But I went with uh, water gods protection for the extra water resistance and successor for, ex uh, for the extra fire resistance to make sure that he gets at least a little bit of resistance somewhere. So when he does get hit by fire or water or whatever, he's not going to get hit. Uh, for that much for those turns so the reason i can do this fight at all is because of cloud cloud of darkness i do not have marie and i don't want to use um what's his face sirius or minfilia because their ability uh minfilia's moves are abilities but uh you can only cast one you don't have an aoe so the only two aoe all resistance that we have here is going to be um Cloud of Darkness uh, using Omni Veil. Where is it? Omni Veil, which boosts resistance to all resistance uh, for all allies, or Marie, who does the same thing called Love You All. She does the same thing. To be completely honest, if you have Marie, this event should be a giant joke to you. Because um, I did do this event, I think, my second time when I was testing out going in with three units to see if I could beat it. And I did beat it, but it was with Marie. And it, she was the staple of the team. So if we don't have. Um, Marie becomes a little bit more difficult because the her love you all resistance is, is stronger than Omni Veil, so eh, no bigger rule. Plus, she's got counter bar fire spells that will also stack on top, which are pretty crazy. But anyways, having a unit like Cloud of Darkness uh, or Marie is gonna make this event a lot easier for you. You cast Omni Veil and you sit back. Okay, uh, I made sure that I geared uh, Cloud of Darkness with as much resistance as I can to all of uh, all of her abilities or all of the resistances. Uh, to make sure that when, when when she does die, because I know she's going to die, I didn't gear her in a position for her to stay alive. When she does die, when I do res her, I don't have to recast Omni Veil right away because I know the Cloud of Darkness can still survive because her resistances are 50 plus on everything, okay? So again, it's Spirit, uh, Refresh, everybody should at least have one of these, uh, and some free-to-play items here, patches and uh, Water God. So essentially, everything on her right now is free-to-play. As far as her... Uh, TM's free to play mentality is from uh, the TM from Refia, so that's not free to play. The rest of them are free to play. Alright, and then we got Refia here. So essentially, the way I ran into this, I wanted to run with two healers because it is the safest route to go. Uh, and the reason I did it this way is because I wanted to push as, as fast as possible to the 40%. Uh, where he does the ma uh, Maelstorm or Maelstorm, where he brings he does 99% damage to you. Uh, so it brings you all your units to uh, literally almost dead. So no matter what, he can't kill you with that move. He'll bring you to the dead. 
So you push as fast as you can to that, double heal up, and then get ready for the hard part. The hard part begins 40% and below. That's when he's gonna, you know, you hit his final threshold at like 30% or 20%, where he starts doing the, what do you call it, the Mega Flare Cannon, and then you're gonna get screwed. So essentially what I did for my uh, Refia, but as you see, I utilize the other Refia a little bit more than mine. The first round to let my refia die because i know my refia will die if, if i don't uh, defend or whatever so i used i played with them to see who's gonna survive because i know if i res mine she's got a little bit of resistances so she can stay alive whereas the other one doesn't have it so dreamwalker is a tm from uh who the hell was it alma he just is from uh leo cat ear hood this is a silver chest reward is it silver chest no sorry aura silver chest Silver chest or key. I can't remember where I got this, but this is this is a phenomenal hat. If you guys don't have this, you better go get it, go out there and get it because this is gonna help you with raids, bosses, anything that casts any sort of element. It's gonna help you. Twenty to three uh, to four elements: light, lightning, ice, and fire is fantastic. Plus, it gives you magic and spirit. Boom, shakalaka. We got Siren's robe here. Ooh, sorry. Siren's robe here uh, from uh, Siren <laughs> for the extra spirit. Uh, Saluna Ring and the Vestment of Mind are very key here. They were from the, well, Vestment of the Mind is free to play, but Salu uh, Saluna Ring is from the, uh, what do you call it, Chinese New Year event. Like, they give you refresh, and you want to have that on your healer or on your support resistance buffer. I put Ring of the Lucy eye on her because I didn't bring a tank, and I know that sooner or later Refia will get hit by a melee attack, so eventually I wanted to make sure that she gets at least a little bit of her MP back and a chance to, uh, you know, cast Holy or whatever. Uh, equipped Heavy Shield, this is free to play, I believe. Yeah, this is free to play. Shard of Genius is also free to play. This is uh, Yoshtola's TM, uh, Hydlian Guard, Blah. is also free to play. Dual cast is not. By now, if you're a new player, I mean, like, if you can beat this, then fantastic. But I'm telling you guys right off the bat, having dual cast is such key for, for these events. I ended up having dual cast on her to make sure that she can keep all my units alive in case my second healer dies. But having two units that have dual cast that can, he that can heal is going to make this uh, walk in the park, okay? So those are the units, guys. I hope I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this is going to be a commentary, as you will probably see from the start, because I'm going to commentate through everything. I'll talk about the strategy as well, and uh, we'll go that we'll go about it that way. Hopefully, I might make one more using maybe a three or four unit party instead of having a five unit party. Uh, but I originally when I beat this, I beat it with three units. I beat it with um, Yoshtola. Uh, Orlando and my cloud so I only had three units that I beat it with originally um, but my Yoshtola right now is, is taking a back seat while I test some stuff and uh, there she is so Yoshtola so I'll just show you her gear uh, she had the cat cat hat gear here but this is pretty much what I put on her um, and what I did was I utilized her auto limit, her limit burst, uh, that res reduces the, uh, what do you call it, damage we take every so often. It's just physical damage, but it, it gives a good chunk of resistances. But she's got um, the bustier for resistances right there. Uh, the item you can craft for her is 68 spirit. And if you want to put dual wield on her, you can get 132 or 36 or whatever uh, spirit just from the two items, which is freaking crazy. But... Uh, I didn't have her dual wielding. This is pretty much what I had on her, uh, like this. Um, she had a Saluna, Saluna ring here, and the cat, the pink cat hat here. And I was able to three man it with exactly how these guys are geared. What you see here are on Orlando, what you see here on uh, on Cloud of Darkness, and that is that's the party I went in there with three people. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys found this even a little bit informative. If you did, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section below how you guys are doing on this event. Are you enjoying it? Because I am freaking loving this event. It makes you think. Because that Mega Flare sometimes actually activates and sometimes it doesn't. And it's and people are giving and throwing around different strategies saying like, Oh, it's a bug. Oh, it's a... Honestly, I... I don't think it's a bug, it's a mechanic. It depends. It depends if you debuff him early on that he gets pissed off later on. If you just melee him, sometimes he still does it, sometimes he doesn't. Like, I've, I've beaten him five or six times right now, and honestly, the one time he didn't cast a Mega Flare at all, I honestly was debuffing him the whole time. He had at least a magic break on him, 
uh, almost at all times, or whatever breaking you do, defense or whatever it is. I kept breaking him and just kept attacking him. I wanted to see how fast I could kill him. It was just really bonkers. But hopefully you guys found it informative and uh, let me know how you guys are doing in the comment section and we'll go from there. This is Vordy. Hit that like, hit that sub. I'm out of here. Peace.